Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We meet families and enter their kitchens to explore how to cook in cleaner, faster, cheaper ways, while at the same time increasing family nutrition. We will see how farmers from across the region can benefit from our experts' advice, while also learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experience as they shape up their shambas on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. They hypnotize me. They're so beautiful. And it's so peaceful here. Tony, do you think we can stay a little bit longer and just stare at them? I guess. But at some point we have to leave. That's true. <sighs> Welcome to Shamba Shepa. We are in Baringo County on the shores of Lake Bogoria with the fascinating pink flamingos. This place is stunning. But behind all the beauty lacks a darker reality. Climate change. And it has hit hard a population of about 670,000 people who live off pastoralism and crop farming. Droughts, floods and unusual rains, you name it. To help people better cope with these changes, the World Food Programme together with the Baringo County Government are supporting people to diversify their livelihoods. We want to find out how they are going about it. So, we are meeting with Peter Omolo, our Baringo South County Government Expert, and our farmer Selina Kimaru in Marigat Town. Uh -huh. Selina, yes. we are going to see you at Shamba. Yes. Can all we right. go? Yes. Can we go? All right, all right. All right. Let's all right. meet there. Okay, okay. Fine. Let's meet there. Okay. All right. We are headed to Selina's farm in Mkwen village. It's not an easy ride to Hashamba, but we want to see what she's been doing. With the help of the World Food Program, WFP and the county government, she started planting orange flesh sweet potato seedling. Some farmers grow the vines to get the orange sweet potato. However, since this is a new crop in Baringo, we are visiting farmers who grow the vines to sell them on for seed multiplication. Selena is a proud owner of seven acres of land where she grows mainly maize. She also grows millet, sorghum, and mangoes. But what really interests us are her orange-fleshed sweet potato seedlings. And these are my potatoes. Mm -hmm. Sweet potatoes? Sweet potatoes. Wow. Mm -hmm. Looking good. good. Yes. Good. Thank you. Mm. I think I'll stay here so that I find out more about this. Okay. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. We'll see you later. See you later. All right. All right. <laughs> so, this looks very good. Yeah. I just want to know how did we get here? Now, we got here because we wanted to introduce uh, orange fleshed sweet potatoes in Baringo County. And uh, because it is sponsored by WFP, the World Food Program. Okay. The soils in most areas of Baringo are good for production of orange flesh sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, is also drought resistant. Mm -hmm. She's the first one to ever do it in Baringo County. In Baringo? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. And uh, why did you decide you wanted to introduce the orange flesh sweet potato? Now, we wanted to introduce the orange flesh uh, sweet potato because of, the, of its nutritional and economic benefits. All right. Mm -hmm. Because they are rich in beta carotene, mm -hmm. vitamin A. When I say mama, Wanjasito, mm -hmm. na watoto, mm -hmm. pea nguvu, na, na, na nisaidia, mm -hmm. nipate pesa, mm -hmm. ni use cuttings ya, uh. na ile fiasitamu ile ikondani. Ile ikondani. She is now multiplying for the purpose of distributing the cuttings to other farmers. Mm -hmm. uh, sweet potatoes, they don't have a seed per se, mm -hmm. but the, the what we call seed, is the is a cutting mm -hmm. she has already harvested twice twice the first harvest she sold to other multipliers mm -hmm. and the second harvest she didn't sell but she expanded 
her farm. Mm -hmm. So is it very difficult to plant the orange fresh sweet potato? It is uh, very easy. Mm -hmm. For seed multiplication, you make a one meter wide bed. Then you plant the cuttings 10 centimeters apart. It's as simple as that. And so far, how is it, how is it taking you? I'm in the Kambale. I'm in the Kambale. I'm in the Kambale. I'm in the Kambale. I'm in Ah, you've got an over... In one week. 40,000 in one week. Mm. Peter, is that true? Exactly. Now, this planting material, when we planted it, it took only two, two and a half months. And from the original uh, 4,000 uh, cuttings that we planted, mm -hmm. she was able to get over 50,000 cuttings. Kwa sababu una unakata hii. Eh. Moja. Mhm. Hayo kwa sababu hapa na hapa na hapa kata hapo. Mhm. Hiyo ni 4 shillings. That's already 4 shillings. So, you count up to 3 nodes and then cut the vine here. Since Selina is growing the vines for multiplication, she cuts them here. Those growing vines to get the tuber root will need a longer vine. So it gives you money? Yes. And you have people who come to buy? Yes. There are now four more seed multipliers in the region. Let's go and meet another one in Marigat. This is Alseba Kurui's one-acre farm. She has planted orange-fleshed sweet potato cuttings on a quarter of an acre. But she has even leased out a plot to another seed multiplier, Grace. I don't get it. Isn't this competition? So, Elseba, what on the ground is that you've leased a piece of land to Grace? And on this piece of land, she's planted orange-fleshed sweet potatoes. You've also planted orange-fleshed sweet potatoes. Is it normal to do this? Because for me, that looks like competition. Peter, what I know, yes. in business, there is no friendship in money. It is true. That doesn't bother you? Simba, I was a babu, to make a tap at Kati, Yaganuko, Nayango, Akikata, same wheel, Minakata Yango. Maybe she's going to take your customers. You're not going to get the amount of money that you want. Ah, I sit as young buyer. Hm, was a babu, the rap young, na, Nichiran. Hmm, interesting. And you, Grace? I'm going to share that show. Because I'm going to share that show. Tunapanya kwa urafiki, hata kubalilia tunasaidiana. Ya ikikuwa ngumu, anamsaidia. Ya ikikuwa ngumu, anamsaidia. Mamba ya maji, tunategea wote, tunasaidiana. So they work hand in hand. So you want to tell me market is so good? I would say that the market is not a very big issue. In the five DVMs that we have, we are targeting around 2,250 farmers. And uh, you see this area here is about a quarter an acre, and we planted around 22,000 small cuttings, mm -hmm. uh, which have produced between 20 to 22,000 plants, mm -hmm. from which we expect around 100,000 cuttings for root development. Uh -huh. Since one cutting is two shillings, that is around 200,000 shillings that we expect from this farm. In fact, over 200,000 from this small quarter an acre. That sounds good. Yeah. These ladies are going to be super rich. Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. No competition, only solidarity and a push for better lives. At this rate, Maringo South will be having a booming new market for orange-fleshed sweet potatoes. We are going to look at another type of livelihood that the World Food Programme is supporting farmers with, beekeeping. I'm on my way to meet with Bogoria Juakali, a group of farmers who have adopted it. The chairman of the group, Sami Cheptuko, and our county expert, Solomon Kirienyi, are going to harvest honey, and I'll join them. But first, I have to gear up. So Solomon, why should farmers wear protective gear? One of the functions is that it protects the farmer from being stung by bees. And you see sting. It's also poisonous. If you are stung by about 10 bees, you will definitely die. Okay, let's go then. The group received 15 modern hives from WFP, and they have also 20 traditional beehives. Let's start with the modern one. You can now open. 
and you open slowly because in a beehive you, you might have some other pests inside, like even a snakes, wasps. The reason why you don't have bees here yes. is because they might have absconded because of the reptiles inside here. Uh, there is no honey in this one. Lesson learned. You have to check your beehives regularly and keep them clean because bees are fussy. Now, on to the traditional ones. It is easier said than done. To harvest, you have to be two of you and climb up that tree there. I will give it a try, but don't tell my wife. Very interesting harvesting from the traditional beehive. Yes. Is that how it was done normally? It was done during night hours. Yes. Naked. Without uh, did you say naked? Yes. They normally harvest during night hours because that's the time when bees are inside the, the beehive. Most of the times we see we inspect it together with the ladies, but they cannot harvest actually. Why, why, why is that? According to the culture, when they harvest it, we believe that the bees which are inside will move. Yes. They don't like the women. No, they turn off the, the women. <laughs> we yes. believe and it happens actually like that. That's the belief the traditional people have because most of the beehives are localized whereby it is installed high up in the trees. So it is difficult for the women to climb the tree. But nowadays, as the department and as the ministry, we are trying to promote each and every individual to enter into beekeeping business. That's why we are going into modern beekeeping, whereby hives are installed as low as possible, such that everybody can access. Uh, Solomon, what's the difference between uh, the modern and traditional beehives? The modern beehives is that uh, you control the quality of the honey, whereby you have a chamber for the queen and the brood, and the chamber for the, for the honey, pure honey. So that's where you can harvest the pure honey in one side, and you leave the brood to continue. But unlike the traditional, whereby you cannot separate the, the, the brood and the honey. Sio mbaya kuna asali kidogo. Naona saa hii ni wakati ya kiangazi. Okay, nyuki sasa nakuwa kali. There is always a poor quality of honey because you mix the pollen, the larvae and the honey. So you get poor quality honey from the traditional uh, hive. We expect in future all our farmers will have gone modern because we are trying to, we are gearing towards getting quality honey. Let's recap. The traditional hive is round and hung up on a tree. As a result, it's more dangerous to harvest and quality of the honey is not as good. You can harvest up to 25 kilograms, but only once or twice a year. The modern hives can be hung low, are easy to harvest and give better quality honey. There is a Kenyan top bar hive. It's a simple, modern hive and will give you up to 20 kilograms of honey per harvest twice a year. The Langstroth hive is the most productive hive. It has two chambers and can give you up to 15 kilograms of honey per every three months. What environment is good to attract bees? Bees can thrive in any environment, be it cold or warm. But we found that in Paringo, we have got the highlands and the lowlands. The highlands are now occupied with farming and they use chemicals to spray the farm. Beekeeping does now well in the lowland because farming is minimal. And also we have got um, many species of plants. That's what we call bee forage. Is beekeeping a good business for small farmers here? Beekeeping, it has been practiced at time immemorial and bees are there in the environment. Mm -hmm. So it is a very nice venture. Mm -hmm. So it is not a tiresome work. You cannot strain, it's just your work is to inspect it and make sure it is in good condition and it is not disturbed by predators or animals. Ah, so you must do regular inspection. Yes, we usually do regular inspection and we love the work because it is not tiresome. Beekeeping is a business like any other business. And because of the nature of the changing world, we need to get employment and our youth 
are out there after finishing school, they, they stay hiding in the field, in the homes. So we encourage them to form groups and then keep beekeeping. When they, once they harvest the honey, they process and then they sell. Now, uh, beekeeping is profitable, isn't it? Yes. Very profitable. Very profitable. Would you agree? Yes. Speaking of profit, mm -hmm. I want to go and see what Caro has been up to and uh, also see what the women beekeeping group thinks about markets. Hey, Tony, where have you been? Caro, I was up a tree harvesting honey. And you survived? Mm, look, I'm still here, strong and standing. Hey, welcome back. To Shamba Shape Up. We are in Loboy location near Mariga Town in Baringo County. We've learned about orange-fleshed sweet potato cuttings and the crop's economic and health benefits. We have also seen how a group of 25 people have adopted beekeeping for a livelihood. Out of the 25 members of the Bogoria Juakali group, 14 are women. They can't harvest, but they're in charge of the processing and the marketing. There was not much honey to be found when we went harvesting today, because they had already harvested some, and it is a dry season. So production is low. Also, the little honey we found in the traditional beehive is nowhere near what a modern beehive can produce in terms of quality because larvae and other insects are mixed with honey. But let's ask Vikuti Kimuge, the secretary of the group, how the market is these days. Earlier, mm -hmm. there were ready market because the tourists were came, coming here. Mm -hmm. Some were buying honey, mm -hmm. most. But now, since the corona came, it has gone down. Mm -hmm. What happens? Because I know in honey there are things that are left out. What do you do with it? We normally preserve it, then we made the wax, then we sell it. Uh, it is used to make uh, candles, especially those used in churches, especially mm. Catholic church. Mm. Oh, candles. They, candles. Yeah, candles. Oh. Because it produces a very nice uh, aroma. It is also used to make uh, pharmaceutical products. The outer cover of cup capsules mm -hmm. is made from wax, such that when somebody swallows, it will melt. It is not harmful. Uh, another product is uh, lipsticks. They use wax to make body creams and also even soap, some soaps. Uh, so, Vicuti, where do you see your group in two years? In two years' time, mm -hmm. if we continue like this, I can see we are moving forward. You're moving forward, yeah. A day at a time, yeah. getting much better. Getting much better. Wow. Mm -hmm. Hello there at home. There's been a lot of misinformation concerning the COVID-19 vaccine. But it is important that you get it as soon as possible. We have asked some people why they think it is important that you get the vaccination. We've not been able to work, travel, or go for events. For us to be able to do this again, we all need to get the COVID-19 vaccination. We've heard many stories about how this vaccination is not good for you. But these stories are not true. We have not been able to get together with our friends and families. We don't want you to die. So when the time comes, get vaccinated. We really should listen to the experts. We are asking you to trust the facts and the research done by leading doctors and scientists all over the world. People are dying and there's something we can do about it. We can stop this. We do not want you to get sick. We do not want your families or your friends to get sick. We don't want you to die. Go on, get vaccinated. We are off to Lake Begoria Tourist Center to meet with another beekeeping group who have also been growing their business with the support of World Food Program and the county government. We meet the Sosiche Women's Group. This seems the right place to set up shop because they used to sell up to 2,000 kilograms of honey a month. But is it still going strong? Hello. Hello. How are you? Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine. Okay. So, yeah. This is uh, Bogoria Sosiche Women Group. Uh -huh. Right? Yes. yes. Women Group. Yes. Uh -huh. Patrick. Yes. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I'm one of the main members. We are selling the honey. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're one of the, he's one of the main members. Yeah. The best honey in Boringo. Yeah, we are selling. Have, have you sold honey today? 
No, to, for today, mm. currently we are being uh, affected by COVID. The like, COVID because our customers locked down everywhere. Oh. Mm. We sell kidogo, small honey. Mm. So you, yeah. you've been affected? Yeah, I've been uh, totally so, affected. How right. was it How was it before this? Before we had very many visitors buying. Mm -hmm. it, we, you come see, for now you could have not kept any honey in our stock. Do you agree? Yeah. yeah agree. All right. And you know, in life you must always have a plan B. Huh? And I hear there's some business that you're doing. What business is this, Judy? Now you are doing pasture production in our farms Good. within our community. Okay. Yeah. You sell it to other farmers? We are, yeah, we sell to our farmers. Let's go have a look. Let's go have a look. Let's go have a look. Take us there. Take us there. Let's go. Let's go. Lead on, Lead Patrick. The Sosiche Women's Group with its 14 women and one man wasn't satisfied with selling honey only. So they got three acres of land from the members and with the help of WFP and the county government of Baringo, they got seeds of Senkras ciliaris grass. In other words, pasture grass. But pasture grass? Why? We have many livestock in our homes. Mm -hmm. And for many years, we have been losing a lot of livestock due to drought. Mm -hmm. So we decided to come up with pasture production to minimize the rate of losing animals. Mm -hmm. And now we have very many hectares of land. Mm -hmm. We have planted our seeds. Right. Formerly, the rain patterns used to be more of uh, conducive. But uh, with the climate change, we have seen a new scenario whereby the lakes in the rifts now rising, at the same time, the temperatures is unpredictable. And now, at the end of the day, as the farmers grow the maize and other crops, there is no uh, yielding. Mm -hmm. And that is why now, as a part of the Sosiche, we decided to change our mindset and uh, come up with this project of uh, pasture uh, production. Lillian, yes. how is the government helping our women? Okay, the government is helping our women by first giving them the seeds because like for this, this group, we gave them the first uh, three bags. That is enough for three acres. Normally, synchro ciliaries, you plant 10 kilos per acre. So we gave them for three acres. After that, they harvested and they got around 50 bags. They saw that uh, planting this, this, this grass is important. So they wrote some proposal to other partners, and that is how they acquired the 45 acres. Mm -hmm. yes. They decided there is some a viable business here. Exactly, so let's because the uh, market is there, the demand is there. Mm -hmm. Like now, during the dry seasons here in Baringo, one bale will sell at around 400 shillings. But during the normal seasons, it goes for 250 to 300. So the market is there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in one acre, you can get around 200 to 250 bales. So you can do the maths. Oh, yeah. Very good money. Good business. Mm -hmm. From planting to, to the first harvesting, it takes between 50 to 60 days. You get it's the first. quite quick growing, yes. isn't yes. it? Yes. Yeah. Like for this crop we are seeing here, it has taken around 50 days what? only. And now it's ready? Yes, yeah. it is ready. Uh -huh. One bay of hay goes for 250 to 300 shillings in the wet season. Every two months, the women make 200 bales from harvesting just one acre of grass. Taking 250 shillings per bale, it means they can make mm, 50,000 Kenya shillings from one acre every two months. It really is impressive, I must say. So far, if, if you can look at your lives before you started planting the grass and right now that you've done it and maybe sold, is there a change? Very great change. The change came since we have been harvesting this grass. We sell to our neighbors within the community. We get an income. Mm -hmm. That income has improved to our living standard mm -hmm. within our homes and outside. And outside. Yeah. So you're happy about it? We are very much grateful. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Nice, yeah. nice. So, so your group does not only depend on beekeeping? We depend both in beekeeping and pasture production. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'd even forgotten. You you expanded the land. Yeah, we have expanded. This one is about how many acres? Wow. This is five and we have 45 extra. 45 extra? Yeah. Wow. And all of it is grass? All of it is grass. Yes. That's so City Women's Group want to expand? Yeah, since we started from three acres, now we are at 50. We are seeing expanding to more than 100 acres uh -huh. in future. 
So in the next two years, yeah, you'll be at... That we are sensitizing the community on benefits of growing the grass. Mm -hmm. Since it is one of the income, we employ our youth to do the cutting, to do the bailing, and that's one of the income with, for our youth in our community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Patrick, how, how does that make you feel? I feel happy being a member of this uh, Sosuche Women Group. And a part of the management is that uh, we surely ensure that weeding is done. At the same time, the fencing of this uh, land so that at the end of the day, our class is protected because this is money. We are doing business. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, we know that our cattle are safe also. And uh, we are improving now uh, the livestock in our area. Mm -hmm. All right. So soon we'll be producing enough milk, enough meat wow. to supply yes. to the country. Okay. Wow. Yeah. So Tony, four eggs. That will be enough. Two for you, two for me. Yes. First on that spring, two minutes. Then this one, this other spring, because it's extra hot, five minutes. Got it, got it. And that's all from Lake Bogoria in Baringo County. Ah, so we'll remain here, enjoy our hot springs, and of course, our eggs. See you! On Shamba Shepap! <laughs>